Welcome to Trick or CNC Out, where we talk about the various ways you can improve upon the stock configuration of your Winfinity Elite. Today, protect your laser. If you guys have been watching the channel for any length of time, you've seen this contraption I have mounted here on the front of my spindle. This, the idea here is to protect the laser from crashing into anything that might be below it when it, the machine homes or when you're jogging around and not paying super close attention. It could, you know, in my case, potentially crash into the tool racks and tool holders. It could crash into the wasteboard. It could crash into my tool setter. And I don't want any of those things to happen. Now, um, originally this idea was inspired by a, a video that Peter from Masso put up, and I just kind of adapted it to the JTEC laser and the Onefinity system. So I'll kind of give you an idea of what this looks like so you can you can see. And, and before I go too much further, you can download these files. This is not a product I sell, but you can download these files a couple different ways. One, um, you could go to Patreon and buy it. I don't know. I, mean, I didn't really intend to sell products on, on Patreon, but it's possible to do that. When you put stuff on there, Patreon makes you put a price on it. So that's one way. Um, you could subscribe to the digital downloads tier on my Patreon channel, I guess. And, uh, and then you get access to not only this model, but all the other models I put up on Patreon. And I would do that if you want to, you know, help out a little bit for whatever reason, you want to give me a little bit of support. If that's not interesting to you, but you still want the downloads, I'm going to put a link also in the description where you can go to the website and download the stuff for free, uh, which is fine with me too. If you don't want to support on Patreon, that's okay. You can download it for free from the website. And... Now I'll go through kind of what it looks like uh, physically here. So first, um, it required a different mounting plate here on the back of the laser. Now uh, there's a couple different changes, a couple changes from what the what the uh, JTEC stock one had. First, the stock plate had the magnets had to actually pull through the plastic in order to attach to the mount the magnets on the mount. And that weakens the connection when they're not actually able to touch each other. So I mount the magnets differently so they can actually touch each other. And it's a stronger connection so you don't as easily bump it off, which I've done a few times on the stock mount. And the second thing that's different is instead of only four magnets, there are six in this configuration. So it's got quite a bit stronger connection, still easily removable, but less prone to being incidentally bumped off. So that's one thing. Um, the next part is the mount itself and this is made out of aluminum uh, it's quarter inch aluminum two inch wide flat bar i just got a piece of home depot I, I, it wasn't much and uh, i used the cnc to cut it out and in the model or that i the download that you'll get uh it's got the dxf file and the stl so if you want to cut it out on your machine you could do that a uh, couple things about it one, the magnets protrude a little bit from the back of the, or from the face of the aluminum. And that's a couple reasons why it's three inch or three millimeter thick magnets, but, and that's about an eighth inch, which is about just barely over three millimeters. So I didn't want to create through holes there, but also because they protrude a little bit, they recess in here a little bit into the back of the mount. And that gives them a little bit of something to hang on to so that they, they're more firmly in the right position, I guess, because those slightly recess into the back of the mag, the the back of the mount on the the back of the laser as well. So it's just even a little bit long, stronger connection. The second thing is they've got all these holes uh, here that are used to attach this flat bar to the carriage, and there's actually two carriages that come with this linear rail. It's a three hundred or 300 millimeter linear rail, which I'll, I'll link to on Amazon as well. Um, and th those holes being spaced every 10 millimeters apart allow you to position the flat bar really wherever you want to on, on that, uh, on those, uh, against those carriages and the linear rail. So you can mount them, mount up really high or really low or somewhere in the middle, depending on your machine and how you have it set up and how you want things to lay out. So there's a lot of adjustability there. I'm using M3 by six screws to mount them into the carriage, mount this plate into the carriage. And uh, I have another hole help here at the top with an M5 screw into it or cap screw into it. And I just use that 
to, uh, to lock it into position when I want to lock it into position. And normally I'm doing that when I want to lock it up. So um, that's how I do it. Um, this linear rail, as you see, has holes, I believe, on every 20 millimeters. And um, you can mount it as high up or as low down as you'd like to on your spindle. And now there's a couple different ways to attach it to your spindle. One way, if you have an ATC and it's in the sidekick, the sidekick has a bunch of threaded inserts on 20 millimeter center, so it's <clears throat> excuse me, it's made to support uh, this setup, and you know potentially other things if you wanted to mount other things in the front as well. But if you don't have the sidekick, you can also use the adapter plate that is in, included in the model, and that essentially just adapts the the four M5 screw hole pattern to the a three M3 hole pattern for the linear rail. Uh, so very easy to mount. Uh, I would use probably six millimeter screws for that um, as well. And then, um, and then you have a solution to mount it either which way you want to go, whether it's to the sidekick or to the stock configuration of the spindle mount. Now, um, before I go inside and, and show you what this looks like on the computer, I'll show you what it looks like when I jog the system down and uh, it actually crashes so you can see what that looks like. So here um, I'm going to just jog down and I'm still careful because I don't want to smash this thing into the table but I'm at the point now where it's just about to hit the table. Now it's hit the table and now any further movement I move the spindle down it's just going to slide the essentially the rail right through the carriages while the there's really no pressure put on the laser trying to drive it down. So I can go up and down here, right? And, and the laser's not really moving there. It's not getting damaged or smashed into the table or bounced into the table when I do that. And when I come back up, the laser just slides down and it lifts up just like normal. So that's the idea to help protect your laser. Um, you know, one thing I will mention, while I'm doing this right here with the 24 watt JTEC laser, if you've got a different laser you'd like to do this with, I'd be interested in designing a back for it as well. Um, I don't intend to sell those, but I'd include it in the bundle for those who want to use it. I just need some help from somebody who's got a different laser who would be willing to take some measurements and help me work on what that layout of the, that back mounting plate needs to be to attach to the to the 44 watt laser or potentially even a different laser. The only other thing that I did here that is, you know, it's not, not unique at all. I've seen a number of people do this. I did put a push connect, quick disconnect on this chunk of air hose so that when I disconnect the magnet, I can not only unplug the electrical connection, but I can quickly use the push connect cable or push connect release to remove the whole assembly and take it off someplace if I'd like to. Now for the most part, a big benefit of this design is I don't have to do that. It's easily adjustable. I can leave the laser on. I do leave the laser on through normal operation. So I'm not having to take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on. I just leave it on when I want to use it. I drop it down. And when I'm done, I bring it back up with the thumb screw here and I'm good to go. Let's go inside and take a look at it on the computer. Here is the model for the slide and all the parts that I put into it. Some of them are not parts that you'll print like you won't need the carriage or, or these two carriages they'll, they'll come with what you'll buy on this linear rail uh, they're all three one part and um, you know, it's kind of hard to see the when they're shaded like this with black so I'll just do shift in to switch them to component colors and then you can see um, what they look like a little bit better so we'll start off by just taking a look at this one um, and that's what that's the back I'll just go ahead and isolate it so it is some magnets some counterboard screws screw holes and the vent holes and then this side here mounts flush against the, the laser so that's what that one looks like and uh, we'll unisolate and then we'll, you know, this one's pretty easy to understand. 
This is the adapter plate. It fits on the spindle mount. It has three holes that line up with the spacing of the holes here. Turns out those are actually 25 millimeters. Um, and, you know, the, so the rail mounts on that. The carriages are attached to the rail. The flat bar is attached there. If I uh, take this adapt, this, uh, this plate here off for just a second, you can see the magnet holes are a little bit off center, but that's the way they are in the back of that laser. So that's good. Um, and then the idea is that this whole front half, including the carriages, slides up and down on the uh, on those on that rail. So if we said we were going to move the component, take this one and you know slide it around, that's the way that would work. That's what we're looking for. All right, so I'll give you the models for the adapter plate for the flat bar as well as the DXF for that in case you want to cut it and a model for this adapter plate here or this this back plate for the 24 watt laser and again if anybody wants to work with me to create one for the 44 watt laser I am happy to do it I think that closes this out thanks a lot